So you want to learn how to play Magic the Gathering. That's awesome, because Magic is the best and most fun game in the whole world. But I'll be honest, it can seem pretty complicated and frankly intimidating to try to learn. So what I want to do in this video is teach you just one single lesson about the game. Once you've learned that, the rest of the rules make a lot more sense. I know you'll probably have some questions as we go along, but I'm going to ask you to just trust me. Focus on learning this one simple but key concept first, and then the game becomes much, much easier to understand. What I'm going to teach you today is how to play a card. There are two kinds of cards in Magic, lands and spells. It's very easy to tell the difference between the two. All you have to do is look in the top right corner. If there are symbols there, like this, then the card is a spell. If there are no symbols, like this, then the card is a land. Lands also say the word land here in the middle. Now the spells are the cards that actually do stuff in the game. They might be creatures which can attack your opponent, or a lightning bolt that can deal a ton of damage to something. Lands, on the other hand, are a resource that allows you to play your spells. You can think of it kind of like money. If you want to cast a spell, well, the lands give you what you need to pay for it. Let's look at the card Savannah Lions. Like all spell cards, it has those symbols in the top right corner. This is the cost. If you want to play this card, you're going to have to pay that cost. Now, see the symbol in this circle? It matches up with a symbol on this land card, a plains. That tells you that this plains can pay the cost of the Savannah Lions and allow you to play it. To do that, you just take the land and turn it sideways, like so. This is called tapping the card. It's a way to indicate that it's been used. When you do that, you generate the one white symbol that is needed to pay the cost of the Savannah Lions. Congratulations! You have just played your first card. You're on your way to becoming a powerful wizard. Don't worry too much just yet about what the card does or how it functions. That will come later. Let's try another spell with a cost that's a little bit more complex. Check out Coral Commando. This card cost has more than one symbol on it, a gray circle with the number two and a blue water droplet. Now, when there are multiple symbols like this in the cost of a card, I want you to imagine that there is an invisible plus sign between each symbol. So you need to pay this plus that. The blue bit matches up with this island land card, so that tells you that you need one island to pay for it, just like you needed one plains to pay the white symbol last time. But the symbol with the two in it, it's a little different. To pay this part of the cost, you need two lands, but they can be of any color. So it doesn't matter if you use a plains, an island, or any other land. That means to cast this spell, you will need to tap your island plus two more lands of any color. So it's gonna take three lands total to play this card. More expensive spells are bigger and more powerful, but their card costs still work in the same way. For instance, this big gorilla has a gray circle with a three in it, plus two green tree symbols. So how many lands do you think it will take to play this monster? If you said five, you're correct. But in this case, two of those five lands must have matching green symbols on them, like this. Yeah, that thing is scary. Okay, let's do a quick thought exercise. I want you to try and figure out how to play some cards on your own. Let's imagine you have these three lands in play, and in your hand, you have three spells. Which of these cards can you play right now? Remember, the gray numbers can be paid with any land, but the colored symbols must match the color of a land you use. And don't forget the invisible plus sign between each symbol. If you said Goblin Raiders, you're correct. You can cast it by tapping one red mountain land and either one of your other lands. You cannot cast this spell because it unfortunately needs at least one blue land, which you don't have. And likewise, you can't play this one because it requires at least four total lands, but you've only got three. All right, let's try one more, just to make sure you really have the concept down. Here are your three spells, but this time you've got four lands. So what can you play? If you said either of these two cards, you're correct. This card requires two white lands plus one of any color. And this one takes one plains plus one island plus two lands of any color. The only card you can't play is this one, because even though you have the island you need, you require five other lands to pay the rest of the cost, but you only have three left. You'll run into a lot of situations where there's more than one card that you can play. Figuring out which is the best choice in any given situation? Well, that's where the strategy comes in. Magic is a game that really rewards smart decision making and player skill. As you get deeper into magic, your spells can be crafted into your own unique strategy. Sakama! Yeah. Kamara! <laughs> <laughs> 
whether it's by using tricks to outthink and outmaneuver your opponent. On six. Throwing huge, game-ending haymakers. I win! Yeah! <laughs> or putting together the perfect combo of spells to completely take over the game. So now that you've gotten the most important lesson down, how to play your cards, the number one best way to learn to play Magic is by downloading the digital version of the game called Magic the Gathering Arena. It's totally free to get started and gives you immediate access to a bunch of easy to understand tutorials that are specifically designed to teach you the game in a hands-on setting. And the great thing is, it's a completely safe environment. You start by playing with and against the computer, so you don't have to worry about making mistakes or experimenting. Trust me, even if you only want to play with paper cards in the real world, Arena really is the best way to learn the ropes. The rules in the digital game are the exact same as what you'll use at your kitchen table. There's a reason that Magic the Gathering has been so popular for so long. It really is just a lot of fun. Anyone can learn it, and Arena makes that process easier than ever. Okay, that's it for this video. Maybe someday soon, I'll be slinging spells against you myself. Better practice up. Take care.